So when I found the Lord gave us a word, try to live it during the week. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we on? <laughs> ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me pray very quickly. Lord, we bless you and we bless your name. We bless those who are watching today. My friend, today, the Lord is showing me that he is going to heal you. So if there is any sickness in you, get ready because the Lord will heal you. Didn't you know that it's written that healing is children's bread? He's going to feed you with healing, abundant life. Father, thank you that by your stripes, everyone who is watching, whether believers or not, those who are here for good motive, even for the wrong motives, I pray that you show them that you are a good God, that you bless them, that you touch them. And after they receive your blessings, I pray that they will all change and they serve you and they love you. Why not love him? Why forsake him? Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. As I was sharing, <laughs> I thought I was not on a mic. I was reminding the congregation that when I preach the message, remember to apply for the week because it's life changing. I am a businesswoman. I really don't have the time to come here and share the word of God if I know that it's not going to change your life. So grab it, apply it. It's going to change your life. Thank you, everyone, this morning. This week, I hear the voice of the Lord speaking to me. Prepare! Prepare, prepare. Prepare for what? Prepare for war. For some people, this is new, but here we are already in a war. But for some people, it's new. So prepare for war. Prepare for what? Prepare for the Lord. For the coming of the Lord. Before you take a test in your school, you study. You spend the night and the days reading and doing researches. And because you are prepared, when the test comes, you pass. But what will happen if you did not prepare, if you did not read? Or let's say you even read and you prepared, but you're late. You don't get, get there in time. You will not pass. When you were lucky, and you have a man proposing uh, to marry you. There's gonna be a wedding. What do you do when you have a wedding coming up? You do not wait for that day doing nothing. You wait, working hard, preparing. Because if the wedding day comes, for surely it will come, if it comes and you're not prepared, you're not going to walk down the aisle. So we need to understand that we are a people who live in a time. God made a time for earth. There is no time in heaven. And on earth, the time moves. Is there anyone who has not seen time moving? 
So I believe each one of us, we've seen the term moving. This means we need also to move with time, preparing, taking action. The Lord spoke to me. There are battles ahead of you. Some of you already have entered these battles. Believe it or not, we have entered the battles of the last days. It's almost like we are fighting face to face with the devil and he is determined as much as we are, even much more than those who are awakened because in these days, people are in a war they do not even know. Isn't that sad? That you are in a war and you do not know. You have an enemy living within your household, but you do not know. What is the enemy? The enemy is the liberal views. The views that will end up taking you to hell. The enemies are those wicked people who give themselves over to the devil to be used by the enemy. Let's go very quickly to the book of Revelation chapter 19. I want to show you that there are two armies. And God has already revealed to me that these armies are in a confrontational stage right now on earth. Revelation chapter 19, beginning with verse 11 through 14. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and his head are many diadems. And he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. Hallelujah. Jesus the King. He is the chief commander. Amen. He heads the army, hallelujah. And he is called the word of God. We see him and the armies which are in heaven, they were following after him. Let me say, if you belong to God and you are a prayer warrior, you are a faithful prayer warrior, you are together with these armies and we are all behind Jesus, following in his footsteps, obeying his command because there is a battle ahead of us. Now, we will continue to read from verse 17 to 19. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds which are flying in mid-heaven, Come, assemble for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of commanders, and the flesh of the mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free men and slaves, and small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. We just saw one army. It's a holy army. End times holy army. And here, verse 17 through 19, we see that there is another group. Uh, there is another army. There can be a war unless there is at least two teams. So the second team is the Antichrist.
Antichrist. The Antichrist, who is anti-God, who works for the devil. And it says here, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war. So in the same way, God comes with the holy ones. God comes with the holy ones. You can find in Jude 14. Jude 14. Jude is the book just before the book of Revelation. Let's read 14 to 16. It was also about these men that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds, which they have done in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, finding fault, following after, after their own lusts. They speak arrogantly, flattering people for the sake of gaining an advantage. Thank you. So here we see the holy army. Uh, in verse 14, Enoch, uh, who prophesied, in the seventh generation from Adam, you can read the story of Enoch. There is a book about him. And also, uh, you can read that in Genesis chapter 5. And he was a righteous man, a man who never seen death, because he was so righteous, so longing to be with God, and the Bible tells us that Enoch worked with God after he has a family, after he has a children. He decided to work with God, and one day God took him. So this man prophesies, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of his holy ones. So that's the army that we are talking about in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 19, face to face. The Lord has told us about this army also and about how we were in a training in 2013. Our church began to be in a training to be part of this army. And I would advise everyone, if you want to be in this army, any time is a holy warrior, holy army, you contact our ministry and we will get you trained. We will get you hooked up. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So in the same way God has his army, you need to know that the devil is also his army. It's an army that is wicked, that is powerless, if only we all could wake up and say no to sin and say no to the devil. The devil deceives many people and he can do nothing without the help of humanity. So he deceives and he uses people to kill others. Everyone who kills is of the devil. The enemy uses people to hurt other people and to practice all kinds of wickedness in order to inflict misery upon humanity. So my friend, prepare for war because the time when it is two army are confronting each other has already begun. It has already begun. You do not have to be very clever to know that it has begun. Look, just go on television, open CNN, and open Focus News. You are going to see the confrontation. Now, the third thing is that many 
brothers and sisters, even those of you who are watching, you do not know that there is a war going on between those two television actors, which are not the only ones. There are many others, but you need to be very careful that you are following the news that are very conservative because that's who God is. God is for life, you know, not for abortion. God is against homosexuality. He said, don't practice those things. But the other people, they are like, let everybody, let's tolerate everyone. And we have to tolerate, but we have to still tell them, repent, because this is what the Bible says. We have to love them, but we have to point them to the truth. Amen. What good will it be, my friend? What good will it be if we cannot tell truth to each other because we are worried about offending people? God has blessed me, allow me to boast a little bit. I am very good at telling you the truth. I'm one of a person, I will feel bad if I know the truth and I see you being deceived, I don't tell you. So God has a world that's different, that's how he has one world. I will tell you the truth because it's the truth that will set you free. The armies which are in heaven, let's talk about that. Because we are now going to be part of the devil's army. Even if he were to come and give you five million dollars, don't take it and don't serve him. Because when you serve the devil, he pays you hell. We don't want to go to hell. Hell is bad. Hell has no exit. Hell has no life. Fire, snakes, worms, forever and ever, and ending pain, and ending torment. We don't want Head. Hallelujah. So this army, it is an army that is prepared. As you look in verse 14, it says, the army which is in heaven, they were clothed in a fine linen, white and clean, and they were following Jesus on a white horse. Hallelujah. You follow Jesus to fight his battles. One day we ask him, Lord, since you're God Almighty, with one word from your mouth, you can destroy the army of the devil. Why do you need us? Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord spoke to us that he does not want to share victory alone. Isn't that what you do when you have good news? You can wait for your husband to come home and you share. And sometimes we share, but many don't get it and we are upset. Because we need people to understand us. We need people to share the joy, sometimes to share the pain as well. So this army in heaven, they are clothed in a fine linen. They are ready. The Bible later on tells us the fine linen is the righteous act of the saints. Did you know that everything that you do, whether small or big, it gets written in the books of heaven? Did you know that every act, every deed, every word that we speak is recorded in heaven by God? I will read this for us. In the book of Ecclesiastes 12, the last verse says, let me start from, from 13 so that we have a good understanding. The conclusion when all has been heard is this. Fear God and keep his commandments because 
This applies to every person. For God will bring every habit to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it's good or evil. Well, how will God bring every habit of, uh, you know, we do to judgment unless he knows? So my friend, you need to know that there are invisible angels who write everything that we do. And God will pay according to what every person has done. This week, uh, there was warfare, and one of the prayer warriors here, she decided to fast for that situation for three days. No juice, no food, maybe only water. And later on, I began to feel sorry for her. You know when you're cooking and someone is fasting in your home, I really don't like it. I usually take my plate and run to my room. Uh, but of course, when we fast many times, the Lord really help us. And when I brought the issue, Lord, she's hungry. But the Lord began to show me how she will get gifts for just doing that. When you fight other people's battle, the Lord will reward you. So it's very important to help one another. If your brother is sick, put everything down and go to the hospital or go see them. When someone is in a prison, Go visit them. When they are hungry, bring them in, feed them. When they are naked, clothe them. It's written in the book of Matthew 25 that when you did those things to them, you did it unto the Lord. So my friend, don't say you have not seen Jesus. Because you see Jesus every single day. Jesus is in your brother and sister. Jesus is in many homeless you meet. Jesus is in those people who are desperate, who are going through testing and the trials. This past week, I was looking at the books, different books, and there is this one that caught my attention. This pastor was talking about how 100% you can hear the loud voice of God. So that caught my attention. I said, wait a minute. He's lying. He's not telling the truth. I pick the book. I read. And he says in the book, to all of you who want to hear the loud of Abba Papa or Jesus, just pick your Bible and begin to read it out loud. Oh my goodness, I was like, I agree. I agree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read it loud. So this army they are wearing fine linen, white and clean. The Bible tells us the fine linen, the white and clean linen, is the righteous art of the saints. It's so very important that when the Lord finds you, he does not find you in the state of the church of Laodicea. He told them, you are naked. It doesn't mean 
They did not have clothes. In fact, the Bible tells us they were clothed worthily. But the Lord is talking about the righteous acts. Doing what's right and going beyond the normal. Going extra mild in your loving kindness. Going in, uh, going a extra mile, helping people. Going extra mile, loving people, praying for them, interceding for them. Thank you, Jesus. In order for this army to have this fine and clean linen, it's because they were ready. When you wear your clothes, they get dirty. And before you wear them again, you are going to wash them, iron them, get them ready. Get them ready. So it's not possible to get those fine linen without being ready. The message today, please be ready. Even if you are a prayer warrior and you are praying many hours every single day, you should not stop there, but you should take a look at your life and get ready by leaving out scripture, by going back to your first love and falling in love with Jesus. Do you remember the story of the virgins, ten virgins? It's in Matthew 25. Now, because time is short today, I will just tell you about the story and maybe we can read a verse or two. The Bible tells us, ten of those virgins, they went, or they were all waiting for the coming of the bridegroom king. Matthew 25. But the king was delaying in coming, and so they began to fall asleep. In verse 2 and 3 through 4, the Bible tells us that five of them were wise. They took the lamps and they took the oil in a flask along with the lamps. While the foolish only took no oil with them, they only had the lamps. To get ready, to be prepared, is to be prepared 100%. When you go to university, don't you have to finish all the years they take you through in order for them to award you the PhD or whatever you were working towards, you have to finish. Even if you were in the last year, but you decide to leave seven months before graduation, they are not going to give you the PhD. So these foolish virgins, they were prepared halfway. And this is where many people are today. They say, well, I am good here. I am not good over there, but, you know, at least I have a 50-50. So God wants us to be prepared. How much? 50%? 90%? No, my friend. 100%. They got all drowsy, 
because the bridegroom was delayed. So there is a waiting time. But in the middle of the night, the bridegroom comes, and the ten of them, of those virgins, they rose and they trimmed their lamps. But there is a problem. The ones who are not prepared, 100%, they don't have the oil. And by the way, you cannot share the anointing. You cannot share the oil. When a person practices righteousness, it does in the future, even a husband and a wife, before God, everyone have to work their salvation with fear and trembling. I am looking at a couple right now. The man's righteousness is not going to be transferred to the wife and the vice versa. And so, you cannot transfer their preparedness. Everyone must prepare. And the Lord, when he gave me this message, he told me, it's not that you do not prepare. The group I'm talking to, especially in this ministry, it's not that you do not prepare. You prepare. And this is speaking to me more than anyone on the earth, probably. But the problem is that many people prepare when it's too late. We must prepare ahead of time. Do not just wait for the time of prayer to repent for your sins. The moment that you are aware that there is a sin in your life, that's here coming your way. Don't wait. Do you, when you have a pain in your body, do you wait until you finish work to take aspirin, ibuprofen? Don't you reach in your purse and you take it right away? So my friend, God said, tell my people, I am coming. Prepare ahead, my people. Prepare ahead of time. Do not be like the foolish virgins who in the last second rush to prepare. So we see them here. In Matthew 25, we see them rushing because they cannot share with the prudent. They cannot borrow. You cannot borrow another man is righteousness. You have to cultivate that yourself. You have to work at it yourself. So in verse 10, we see them rushing, going to the store to buy the oil, to make the purchase by the way, it will cost you to live righteously. When people do harm to you, what do you do? Do you harm them back? No. The Bible says, vengeance belongs to me. So, they went to make the purchase because you cannot borrow. You have to get money out and you have to pay it. Individually, it will cost you to follow Christ, to work in the purity and the holiness. How many times people bash it? They bash you. But as Christians, we don't bash back. We keep quiet. We look up to heaven. We cry out to the Lord. So right there when you are crying to the Lord, 
and instead of retaliating, you're paying the price. They went to purchase, and when they were gone, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready, they went in with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. When the door is shut, it's too late. They miss a great opportunity to go to the wedding feast with the king over nonsense, over not paying attention, not listening to the pastor, not preparing, not practicing the word of God. For this reason, the Bible says, you also must be ready because the Son of Man is coming at an hour which you do not know, you do not think he will. I have seen the way Jesus lives. Jesus is always ready to come back to earth. A season out of season, he won't give any excuse. A season out of season, the Lord spoke to me. He says, tell my people to be ready. A person who is ready. When they are driving, and the red light, they will hit the brakes and they will stop. A person who is ready, they will be able to do something when a drunk driver runs through the light. A person who, will, who is ready, when they come to prayer, they will enter in. In the book of John, chapter 10, it says, you will go in and out and in and you will find pasture. There is so much that the Lord wants to give to us. But we are not prepared the gifts he has for you. Many great and the wonderful things that are waiting for you. But you have to be ready. We are a people who live on the earth where there is destruction everywhere, 24 7. The Lord says to tell his people, you pray, God will show you to pass, to bypass those destructions. and know it well. I won't be able to deliver it if I am not prepared. Many times I have seen pastors who have studied the well. They got it right. But the last minute destruction comes and they are on the phone 24 7 24 7 by the time they get to the time of preaching they are already full of the arguments of facebook twitter youtube you name it and the person is in another world but when we are ready spiritually god will feed us and his anointing will break the yoke. Pastors, wake up early and seek God. Consecrate yourself. Consecrate yourself. Set yourself apart. As I close, I will 
give you a few things to do to prepare yourself. Let's read in the book of Acts, chapter 1, 14 through 16. These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. At this time Peter stood up in the midst of the, of the brethren. A gathering of about 120 persons was there together, and said, Brethren, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit foretold by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was counted among us and received his share in this ministry. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. I think that's good enough. So we have a people, Jesus' disciples, who need to get themselves ready in order to receive the Holy Spirit. Because God had given them a command to not live until they receive power. The Lord told them to wait and to prepare. Waiting doesn't mean you sit there doing nothing. As we see here in verse 14, they prepared in a unity with continual prayer. The Lord told me to say that you prepare with deep prayer. The Lord said also to tell you, prepare with repentance you can find that in the book of Joel return to me with all your heart Joel chapter 2 then they prepared with the word of God in a chapter 16 you see that Peter is quoting a scripture so they knew the word of God they prepared themselves with the word of God but they also prepared with action. They found replacement. They did not stay there doing nothing because doing nothing is a big mistake. It's not prepared. Haven't you heard about the saying, evil triumphs when good people do nothing? So we should not be a people who are there doing nothing. We must have action. When you have a surgery, you don't just show up and you say, here I am. They give you instruction. You can eat at this certain time. Your stomach has to be empty. And so, because you follow that, you are ready to be operated on. So everything takes preparation. And the Lord, when he gave me this message, he said, this is something that is neglected among believers. Do not be absent-minded. Absent, absent minded. Do not just be there saying, well, I just show up, I just show up. Show up, be on the alert. Be on the alert. Be sober. Be ready. Like a bride preparing for her wedding. Right like a bridegroom who cover himself with ornaments. That's what Isaiah 61 verse 10 says. So the bridegroom must be adorned, covered 
clothing himself with his ornament, clothed with readiness. And the bride must have her jewel. In Revelation chapter 19, we will close with this. After reading, please stand. We will pray. Revelation 19, verse 7. Eight. Let us rejoice and be glad and give the glory to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. It was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean, for the fine linen is the righteous act of the saints. Hallelujah, let us stand. Thank you, hallelujah. Please increase the volume. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is a war coming. But we must pray so strong because the body of Christ is sleeping. Rejoice, smile, and be happy. Thank you.